Hey everybody, this is Pun the Frugal Streamer and Elgato has come out with a new beta for Wavelink and boy have they added some really cool features with this one. This is what I think Wavelink should be for the most part. And I want to go through the new features that they have added and show you all kinds of ways that you can add effects to your microphone now and build a dual PC live stream for no extra cost other than buying a Wave mic or the Wave XLR. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Okay, so this is the new Wavelink. And if you're familiar with Wavelink of the past, you will notice some differences in the UI. Uh, first of all, you see all these buttons that are green and grayed out at the bottom of each of the channel mixes. Those are VST hosts. Wavelink now supports VST2 and VST364 bit plugins. That's going to give us a ton of options for catering our microphone to our vocal and adding all kinds of effects like, you know, Vox and pitch effects, and even equalizing and adding compression to things like our comms from Discord or our music. And it's all free really, because there's tons of free plugins that you can download that will do this effectively, including things like noise suppression, compression, EQ, noise gates, Voxes, all kinds of effects, mastering EQs, anything you can think of pretty much. And the big one that I think is the most important for dual PC streamers looking to build a dual PC streaming setup is NDI because it now supports the NDI VST3 plugin for input and output, which is freaking awesome. So let's go ahead now. I want to show you this. Uh, this is basically how the VST host looks right now, you can go in and add effects. And I have a whole host of effects that I've been testing. And just recently they have included the VST2 effects, which includes the replugs, which I have used extensively on my channel on showing you how to improve your microphone sound. And that's currently what I'm using right now. I'm using a noise suppression plugin. This is the VST plugin equivalent of RN noise that we have in OBS. I'll provide a link in the description for below for all of these plugins that I'm using. Then I'm using the re-EQ, very familiar parametric EQ. And then I'm using the re-comp, re the compressor that, uh, re that Reaper makes. And right now you can select which buses you want that to go to. If you want it to go to input or just a stream, I can turn my input off for my monitor. And then if I wanted to turn the stream off and just have it going to my monitor, I could do that also. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is this only affects the output of the channel going to the bus. It does not affect the actual mic in itself. So if you wanted to send your microphone direct to Discord, it will not include the VST effects. They only go to the output buses. And that's probably one of the critiques I have with this is that, you know, this really makes us want to have a third or fourth, you know, maybe even two buses, uh, one for comms dedicated for Discord TeamSpeak, that sort of thing. And then a fourth one possibly for doing a dedicated recording in addition to these normal buses for monitor and your stream. It is very nice. Each of the channels gets one. Like for my voice chat here, I've actually got a compressor set so that, you know, if somebody comes into my Discord that's really loud, then the compressor will beat the vocal down, the level down so that it's nice and stable and not loud in my ears and in your ears. Uh, in my game here, I've added an NDI input. It'll show up as in F S F FX network, and then you can choose input and output. So my input here for my game is actually coming from the audio from my game PC through the screen capture or screen capture HX that you use to capture your video and audio on your game PC. And it sends that audio, whatever audio you have set to go into the app itself over your network and into this plugin that then brings it into my game channel. And you have this for any one of these. You can set up a dedicated input and output for any of these that you want. Now, I definitely don't recommend doing that per se because it does take up network space that you may not end up having. But for a few 
different ways of you know bringing in NDI inputs and and then you can set dedicated outputs out for each of these channels you can build a custom mix in OBS that way what I have actually requested though is that we have the ability to have VST host on these buses here because then what you can do is instead of setting an output for just one channel you can actually set a dedicated output for the whole bus which is really nice to have I'll show you real quick how I quickly have my chain effects set up. Now, the noise suppression is, a, is there's no setting to it. It's AI-based noise suppression. Like I said, it is really the RN noise filter that we have in OBS, but it's the VST plugin of it that you can download for free. I'll, again, like I said, I'll provide a link for that. Then the second I have my EQ, you hit the little gear there, and then you can see my EQ settings. I've got five bands of equalization I'm using. I've got a couple that I've used to notch out some nasty tones in my uh, vocal uh, where it's really boxy sounding. I've used this uh, band four as a high shelf to get, get a little bit more presence out of the microphone. And I've boosted a fundamental frequency there right around uh, 106 to 110 Hertz with that second band uh, so you can see that this is actually an easy to use parametric eq that's why i like to replug in so much because they're easy to understand and again they're free and then here is my recompressor again click on the gear and you can see the compressor at work here is i've got a ratio of about four uh, set here i've got an attack and gain or these are pretty much set at default and they work well for uh, for most vocals. I've got a little auto makeup gain in there so that it brings up those lows and maintains dynamic range for the most part. And my, I feel like for the most part, my uh, range, my threshold is set pretty good. Uh, you don't want it to get no more than minus 12 at the loudest. You want it to kind of be between minus three and minus six when you're talking normally. And uh, that works really well for you. So that's, uh, I mean, very basic stuff with with my chain and how you can set that up. Again, like I said, with voice chat, I've added a compressor to that so that when people speak, that it kind of knocks that down. I've actually brought the ratio up a little bit because you have no control of your volume coming in through Discord for the most part. Um, and instead of having to go in and adjust the volumes within Discord for each person, uh, you can use this compressor to really knock those vocals down. Uh, if you wanted to even make it a limiter, uh, you could bring it up from in between eight, 10 or higher, and that will then act more like a limiter would. But I do, I do want to kind of give this a little bit of dynamic still, so that's why I've got it down to a five. But yeah, so I mean, there's just tons of options. I definitely do recommend you run a compressor on your game. I definitely recommend at least the three options that I use here for my microphone. Uh, you don't have to necessarily use noise suppression, uh, but I like the AI based suppressions because it does not destroy your vocal. And if you need to, you can also use a gate, which is fine. Now, the one thing that I'd have yet to figure out and they say it does work is you're supposed to be able to reorder these this may be in the work still but i did notice that someone from elgato did mention something about being able to reorder these they might have a build that's newer than me but i've yet to figure out how to get these reordered now one key thing to note on how you get wavelink to see your audio effects i definitely recommend you go and make a VST plugin folder on your hard drive. And what you have to do is you have to then go in and point Elgato to where your folders are. And then you select that folder and then you hit the rescan plugins. And if you have plugins in that folder that are new that are compatible with Wavelink, it will detect and list them all in a little list. In this case here, I don't really have any new plugins. So it's not going to give me anything. But that's that's how you get Wavelink to install and uh, recognize the plugins that you have installed on your system. And then from there, it'll pop up in any of the any of these lists when you hit the plugin or hit the plus sign. I will provide another plugin. I currently cannot use a plugin because I do not have an RTX card on my streaming PC. But the voice effects plugins by Zamar, that's a plugin that 
there's some free aspects of it and there are some paid aspects of it. But you can download that plugin. That is another AI-based noise suppression that uses the power of RTX to be able to do the AI-based suppression. Basically, it's like the NVIDIA broadcast noise, noise uh, suppression plugin. Zaymar's built a plugin for that, voice effects, and you can actually use that inside of Elgato Wavelength, which is really nice. But for, for everybody else like me who doesn't have one, you have RN Noise, and in my opinion, I think they're both pretty much the same in terms of performance. I actually like RN Noise a lot. I love it. I use it all the time. I've been using it ever since they added it in OBS. So now I get to use it inside of Wavelength. hoo -yah! Anyway, guys, I just want to run through real quick how to set that up for using your plugins. Again, you need to download NDI tools if you want the NDI plugin to work. NDI 5 tools, you go to ndi.tv. Again, I'll provide the link down in the description below for that where you can download the NDI tools. They are also free. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to install it on both PCs and then run the Screen Capture or the Screen Capture HX which will capture and i do recommend actually running screen capture hx because that's hardware accelerated if you have an nvidia video card that has nvenc then it, that's what screen capture hx uses to encode the video you could go up to 4k 60 fps across a uh a gigabyte ethernet or faster ethernet and you can send all night all the audio quality you want Another thing that I've done is I've actually used an EQ inside of my music, and this is an MEQ. This is another equalizer that's free that you can download. You click on the settings button to get to it. And what I've actually done is this is actually set to auto listen. This is not the actual EQ, but this is a wave. But you can see this is a pretty nice parametric EQ that you can do some pretty cool things with. But I've added an EQ set to my music to kind of, you know, do some different sounds there to correct any sound in my headphones, that sort of thing. So the NDI is probably the, my favorite thing about this now. And the fact that I can set in chain effects for the microphone. Now, these are important on how you set these up in terms of which one comes first, second, and third. Uh, the priority or the chain works from top to bottom. So it is important to go ahead and use suppression or noise gate at the very beginning and then set your gain at the very beginning. And then from there, then you EQ and you compress as necessary. And then after that, you can add any crazy effects to it where you want to alter your voice. But it's really nice and it's super easy now to set this up because all you have to do, if you wanted to bring, like I said, bring your audio into this, if you're using NDI is you can bring and set this NDI input to that you want to bring in. I can select, these are the different uh, audio feeds for dedicated NDI that I have going on right now. I've got three coming off the stream PC. I've got one coming off the game PC. You can set the game PC. You can set the number of channels you want up to 16. You can do quad channels. You can do eight channels. You can do 16. Uh, I definitely recommend for most people who probably want to do stereo and do one and two. That'll give you good left and right audio. But it's just really cool, the flexibility that you have now with this. I love it. Absolutely love it. It works great. And the best thing about it, and I'm just going to tell you right now, is that it is super stable. It's pretty much set and forget. You don't have to worry about it crashing. You know, for the most part, you don't have to worry about it, you know, getting reconfigured pretty much every time Windows has any update, unlike other programs out there, voice meter. This is a lot easier to deal with than having to deal with, you know, the difficulty that comes along with having voice meter, banana, potato, that sort of thing. All right, so Wavelink. There's a few things I would really like to have added to Wavelink, and there's a lot of them. The first thing here is what a lot of people would like, and that is a third bus dedicated to voice comms. So right now, the VST plugins, the big issue is that with them is they only affect the output going to the, to the buses. So your actual microphone really has no effects on it. So if you were to set your microphone up inside of Discord, instead of using a stream bus, then you are you're going to have is raw microphone. So having a third bus where you can then 
turn off the sources that you don't want going to your Discord or your TeamSpeak or whatever you're using for comms. And then being able to set up the VST plugins for compression EQ and all that stuff uh, and have it go to that third bus. Now your microphone truly will have all the effects for any of your audio devices that you want to use your microphone for inside of your PC, including things like, you know, Premiere or, or an Audition or any of the other audio editing programs that you may use your microphone with. So that's really something that we really do need. And there have been some friends of mine that have voiced their uh, wanting the third uh, plug-in or the third bus because they also have a console where they want to use the console voice chat for going into their stream, you know, and they need that third bus channel to be able to do so. So that's uh, something that we definitely need. Other people have voiced that they would like to actually have a fourth bus for a dedicated recording, and I can understand that too, but we definitely need the voice comms. Uh, another thing that I've asked, personally asked for directly you know, to the developers at Elgato is I've asked them if there's a way that we could have the VST host on the output of the buses themselves. That way you can actually set an NDI output for your full stream. Then you could have your Wavelink on your game PC and then you can send your full stream bus output over NDI to your to your stream PC into OBS, and that would simplify your audio inside of OBS instead of having a bunch of NDI channels coming in for all of the different channels in Wavelink. You just have one. So that is something I've added. And if you're into music and that sort of thing, and you're doing, say, a music stream, then in addition to adding to the effects to each channel, you can also add some additional compression, some things like reverb on the master bus, and which is something that, that you know, a lot of people do for music related live stream mixes. Uh, so that would give you some extra mixing options there too for mastering your bus. So uh, other than that, that's really all I can think of that I, I think, you know, they they have already said that they're going to have the reordering of the plugins. So I'm not really going to knock them on that because I know that that's eventually coming. Uh, you know, but listen, I'm telling you, Wavelink is really nice now. There is a ton of VST plugins that you can download for free, VST2 and VST3 64-bit plugins that you can download for free that will do pretty much anything you want to do with any of your voice effects. If you're using an instrument, you can have instrument effects. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, and I will definitely, you know, if you want me to do a tutorial, uh, you know, step one all the way through the whole process of building a dual PC setup using these VST plugins and setting up your microphone using these VST plugins. Please comment below, um, you know, give a like and comment. Yes, you would like to have that because if you do, I will definitely do a an in-depth video on how to set this up, but it is pretty self-explanatory. The wizard that Elgato has built into the software when you initially set this up is very nice. And you know, setting up the v VSTs is super easy too. They've made it really easy to understand, which is what I love about Wavelink is it's easy to understand uh, and it's stable and reliable, which, you know, in the past I have complained so much about with voice meter. So other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Listen, if you liked it, please hit the thumbs up. I would appreciate it. Feed that algorithm, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell for notifications. And you'll know when I have a video that goes live. Other than that, guys, thank you for watching. I do appreciate the support and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.